One of the most exciting aspects of the exhibition present tense is that some of the exhibition happens outside. There are nine site-specific window installations happening in the community around the Chinese Culture Center. I'm outside today with curator Kevin Chen. Hi, Kevin. Hey, Meg. How are you? Nice to see you. Can you tell me why you decided to bring some of the exhibition outside of the gallery and into the community in this way? Yeah, well, it's a gallery that you wouldn't necessarily know was there unless you actually knew about it or kind of wandered into the hotel and just traipsed up to the third floor. These storefronts have been vacant for one to two years, and we kind of find it a win-win situation. It gives more visibility to the, the actual site as well as um, providing us with the space to interact with a, like a non-arts going public. And beautification as well yeah. of the neighborhood. Um, we're standing in front of this amazing installation by Ken Lowe, who's quite well known in the Bay Area. Um, he is a local artist. Can you talk a little bit more about this particular installation? Oh, sure. Yeah. It's, um, it is actually a store. It is a fake store. It is called Lucky Feet, Happy Shoes. Um, and this kind of continues his artistic exploration of his alter ego of sorts. And it, his alter ego is named K. Lo, and he was a bona fide basketball star before an injury. This iteration is another chapter of his kind of story, and he's actually created a specific shoe. So his, his idea was actually to create a full-fledged storefront. We, he even um, posted a Yelp site where there's now close to over a dozen reviews of this store in and of itself. Um, you can't actually enter into it. There's no business hours for this store. To actually find out more information, you have to walk a block and a half to the Chinese Culture Center into the gallery to get more information about what this is about. And that gets more people into the gallery. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, he, he utilizes all of the, the accoutrements that indicate a storefront. As you probably pull back, you can actually see there's a whole awning that advertises what this, uh, this project slash store is about, too. Let's move to the next installation yeah. site. In contradistinction to Ken's, which was an empty storefront, this is uh, Chinese for Affirmative Action. It's a local, nonprofit community service center. And the artist here is Tucker Nichols, is that correct? That's correct. How did Tucker create this piece? Well, with a lot of the community organizations that we worked with, we began the conversation months ago about a true collaboration where the artists could spend time in the community, spend time getting to know what these organizations were about. It's kind of a profoundly simple yet complex uh, solution that Tucker came up with. Kind of playing off the name of Chinese for affirmative action, yes we are. And the whole notion that he painted it on the inside of the window, um, just kind of looking at boundaries and borders of, of feeling like a part of the community yet not being part of the community. When the staff members and the people that actually utilize the center come back out into the streets, it's kind of like a very incredibly positive, affirmative statement in which to kind of enter back into the real world with. I think it's a very powerful piece. It's great. Um, it's interesting because Tucker is not of Chinese American descent no. or, or Chinese descent. No. And so um, I wanted to ask you about the makeup of the artists in the exhibition. How many artists are in the show? And why did you decide to include non-Chinese artists? Sure. There's 31 total artists in the show. And uh, I'd have to do the count, but roughly about six to seven artists don't have any Chinese heritage to them. Um, one of the reasons we chose to extend the artist pool to non-Chinese heritage, who don't actually have you know Chinese family, Chinese blood, was you know whenever you organize projects or exhibitions like this focused around a specific ethnic or cultural theme, it kind of tends to collapse upon itself if the only people that are responding to it are of that particular group. It doesn't expand it outwards in terms of a further, more deeper, more profound, broader understanding of what it is that we're trying to talk about with this exhibition. This unique perspective gives the show a lot of, of depth and a lot of um, variety of perspective, like you said. Yeah. It's outside, inside, part of you know diaspora, and um, that's what makes the show so interesting, I think, yeah. all these different perspectives. Let's go to one more site. Sure. This artist is Ming Murray, and it's actually installed on the window front of the Chinatown Community Development Center's youth site, where they hold a lot of activities for post, you know, after school for the local Chinatown youth here. Uh, the piece itself, Ming did a lot of traveling in China uh, for the past couple of summers. And this, this is actually a shot of a bunch of Chinese tourists in China who are actually looking at different sites around their own country. And 
and you can tell she did a little bit of photo manipulation where she flipped the image in upon itself and it creates this wonderful articulation of looking in and looking out and looking upon yourself and who's inside, who's outside. It almost seems like what they're looking at is missing and because she's made this mirror right. image, they end up just looking at each other. Yeah. Yeah, it's very interesting. How does that play with the site itself? When we were installing this um, last week, we actually came across one of their programs, which is a senior to senior Mahjong class. They have seniors in high school paired up with senior citizens here in the neighborhood. Actually just hanging out and playing Mahjong is a great way to kind of bridge generations. And they love the fact too that they can kind of see themselves in the picture and yet it was, it was transformed into a very kind of intriguing looking piece of contemporary art. So this idea of, um, of a humanist perspective I know is really important to your curatorial thesis. Yeah. Um, not necessarily looking politically at what is China or Chinese. Um, and can you talk a little bit about that? I mean, our hope, you know, going back to what we were talking about before, one of our goals for this exhibition was just to create a different understanding of what China and Chinese means today, rather than what we all kind of generally know as, you know, traditional, conservative, a lot of it based on food culture, et cetera, et cetera. What we read in the paper, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. So yeah. we were trying to find artists that were really looking at different uh, definitions of what it was to be Chinese or, or what China means, all the way from family to representations and cultural misrepresentations of, of what China and Chinese means. Our, our hope is, you know, that people that come and see the show and see the storefront installations, that they can get a little bit deeper than the surface understanding of what, of what this all represents. And especially within the context of being here in Chinatown, maybe they can come back out onto the streets with, a, with kind of a more humanist understanding of, of what this community is about. I think it's as much as we can try to understand each other as people, in whatever regards, and based on gender, based on culture, based on ethnicity. If we can all understand each other a little bit more than we do, we kind of, in essence, understand that culture a little bit better, and maybe we become like an ounce part of that culture, at least with a, with a again, like a more profound understanding of what the culture means right underneath the surface. So in that way, I think if we all became a little bit Chinese, all became a little bit Latino, all became a little bit queer, I think we'd be much better off as a society.